better represent the event. So the Georgia Region for All FLL programs does not cover the whole state. You'll see this area in red. That is the uh, area that we cover. So northern Georgia actually falls in the Tennessee region. So teams up in that area, uh, they will be contacted by the Tennessee partner. So I know some people that do explore program also do discover. So I just want to show the ages for each program. First Lego League Explore is for ages six to 10 and grades two to four. Discover is for pre-K and first grade. And the Explore program is available by class pack and team options, whereas Discover is only available as a class pack. So let's just look at class pack real quickly. Uh, some people wonder what that is. The class pack, you do not have the option to go to an event. Instead, you have an in-school event, uh, and you have a guide for that. Everything you do will be in the school, in the classroom. Uh, that's what class pack is. The team option, you have that option to attend a festival event. And you can see the different uh, supplies that you get with each option. And then here's the pricing for those different options. So let's talk about First Lego League Explore and the team requirements. You need two or more adult coaches to guide the team through the season. No special technical experience is required. And you can have up to six students, although two to four is best, and Kelly and Tina will talk about that. And the age range, um, six to 10, they must be willing to put in the time, which is usually one to two days per week, and there's about 12 sessions. You'll need a suitable meeting place, either public or private, that can accommodate the group and has internet access. You will uh, register your team through FIRST. You will need a LEGO Education We Do 2.0 kit to program your model. You'll need some supplies for your team poster. And then just the desire to learn, explore, share ideas, and just have fun with your team. So team registration is something that you would have to do each season. It only lasts for one season. And the fee for this year is $99, and that includes your official team number, your explore set, which is used uh, to complete your challenge model. You will get printed copies of the team meeting guide and the engineering notebooks. And new for this season, there's digital access to the guide and the notebooks. And you can access the first storefront where you can purchase a discounted, at a discounted price, your Lego Education We Do 2.0 set. And I believe that discounted price is about 205 plus shipping and handling. You will also be able to access the online team roster where you can register your team members. If you do decide to go to a festival event, uh, you will need to do that. And then you have that option to uh, register for the festival events. Now the team registration fee does not include the shipping and handling costs. Uh, registration to and First Lego League Explorer Festival event, and it doesn't guarantee that events are available in your area. The first program delivery partners run official festival events, which may be in person or remote. This year uh, we will be planning for remote events. And the partners may charge an additional fee to participate in these festival events, and those fees are set by the partners and collected by the partners. The optional items you may need to buy are team shirts and some extra Lego bricks for building. So the new season theme this year is called Playmakers. And this year's challenge, students will explore, 
new ways for people to be more active and work together, and how to ensure that our games and activities are fun and accessible for everyone involved. Students will build a team model and poster, and then celebrate by sharing what they have learned. And the uh, link that I've posted here will take you to more details about the challenge and season. And this is what that page will look like. So you'll see over to your right, you'll see more links. Um, it will give you a lot of different information. If we click on the challenge and resources, then it will take you to this page and you will see some um, videos and there's some documents uh, to help you get started. And then you will see the reviewing sheet uh, that will be used at an event. There are also some certificates. And then you will see that guidance for COVID-19 interruptions. That's a very good document that I suggest all coaches read. It has some suggestions for ways to clean your equipment and manage the equipment. And it also has some advice for how to meet with your team, um, maybe virtually if you needed to, and also ways to divide up the work between your students. Uh, and then at the bottom, there's some resources for the We Do 2.0. Maybe you're just getting started and need some help with that. So this is a very useful page. Uh, available this year, I talked about, there's a digital version of the engineering notebooks. And let me go back a minute. Okay, so up at the top where it says click here, that's uh, where you can uh, access. You can get instructions on accessing this. This is accessed through your dashboard. Uh, so when you registered your team, you set up a first dashboard. So through that dashboard account is where you would access these documents. And so these are just instructions on how to do that. So let's look at the equipment for this season. Uh, so you get the team meeting guide and you get six copies of the notebooks, one for each student, and you get one explore set. And new this season, in order to help you with maybe the virtual meetings, uh, you are going to be allowed to purchase one additional explore set for $35 plus taxes and shipping. And this is available through the first store on your team dashboard. So before you meet with your team, just a, a few tips. Uh, I suggest you read that guidance for COVID-19 interruptions. Um, you'll need to download your LEGO Education We Do 2.0 software if uh, you are new, a new coach, and this is the first year you're using that. You'll want to open your Explore set and then read the team meeting guide and your engineering notebooks just to help you get an understanding of the season. And so I have a few pages of the uh, team meeting guide, uh, and you'll see that they show you how to get started. Uh, they offer some tips. Uh, they show the uh, engineering notebook over on the right-hand side there and offer some advice. And then one more page. They uh, give suggestions on how you might want to split up your meetings and you'll see session one through 12. And you don't have to follow that to a T. Uh, you know, you are flexible. You can register your team at any time. So you can set the start and end date for your season and you can do more sessions if you want or you can do less. So that's up to you to decide. This is just a guide. So here is the new Explore set. And so we have two models. We have the heart game model, and then we have a treadmill. So when we put those two together, uh, if we turn the handle on the front of the treadmill, 
through a series of gears that will also raise the flag. The uh, heart gain model has a flag on it, and as you turn the gears, the flag goes up. And then all the way to the right, you can see that when you add your WeDo 2.0 motor on the very back of those models, then you can program that model to turn both of these, uh, these things, and it will raise that flag. So that's pretty cool. So this is what the uh, We Do 2.0 set looks like. You get all these building pieces, um, and you get the little box to store everything in, and you will have to download that software. So there's the link for that. The We Do software, if you're new uh, to this software, it's very easy to learn. It's a very simple drag and drop platform. And there's a few examples here at the bottom that show you the little icons, the menu. Uh, you just click on them and drag them up. And you'll see one is spin the motor to the right, uh, one is stop the motor from moving, and then we can even control the speed of the motor. So it's very easy to learn. So let's talk about the festival event. Uh, they are a celebration where the students will showcase what they have learned this year and they have a chance to share it with others. Participating in the festival is optional. I know a lot of teams just stay at their school or in their community group and just celebrate on, on their own, and that's perfectly fine. You can do that if you would like, but if you would like to go to a festival, you do have that option. The uh, National team registration fee does not include admission to a festival. This year, the uh, fee is going to be very low. Um, I don't want to say the amount quite yet, but um, we may even be able to waive the fee this year. I will be uh, reaching out to coaches. The festival events require a separate registration. Um, events once we have dates planned for these events, I don't have any dates at the moment. Uh, some teams are just now getting started, and so I will reach out to them and find out what dates are going to work good for everyone, and then I will post those dates on the National First site, and I also will send out an email to each coach to let them know about these events, and then if you want to participate, you can let me know. Just remember that the festival events are non-competitive. This is a non-competitive program, and the teams are not judged. And we don't even call them judges. Instead, we call them reviewers. And they will talk to each team and ask about the team's research, their poster, their model, and the core values. This is the reviewing sheet that the reviewers will use. And so you can see the questions here that the reviewers will ask. And then we just simply give them a score uh, out of the three categories, beginning, accomplished, exceeds. And that is just so that the coach will have some type of feedback. Coaches like to have feedback. And so that's why that is there. Here are a few pictures from last year's event. So you can see the kids are very excited. They really enjoy the events. You can see their posters and their models. So this year, the festival events will be remote, at least for starting out. Uh, during this remote event, teams will have the chance to meet with their reviewers to talk about what they've accomplished. They will talk about what they've researched, any field trips that they took, and what they have learned. They also talk about what can be seen on their team poster and tell us about what they have built in their model. First is committed to adapting to the recent circumstances and enabling our community to stay engaged with FIRST programs. So in response to these situations, they have launched the FIRST Remote Event Hub. And so this is where the event will take place. 
via video video via video conference session. So I have more information uh, going out to the coaches about this. So now I'm going to hand it over to Tina and Kelly to talk a little bit about their experience as coaches. Hi everyone, I'm Kelly Moss and we actually at our school, Mount Perrin Christian School, we started some teams in our elementary school several years ago and the poster that you just saw um, was completed by one of our fourth grade groups that participated a couple of years ago with the space theme that they, they loved that theme for sure. Um, what I wanted to tell you is the reason I started in first. Um, I'm an elementary school teacher and I saw with my son at the FTC level, I saw um, his experience with his coaches and teammates as well as the, the full um, breadth of skills that he learned in presentation and um, you know, just a variety of skills in keeping their team organized and going. So I saw the, the skills and I saw that you could start that at a young age and start emphasizing those core values of teamwork and all the things that FIRST stands for. And um, thought and um, asked my dear peer teacher friend to, to volunteer with me and we started some teams in our lower school. So we've had various numbers of teams and she can tell you more about that. But um, we've also hosted an expo um, and we hope to do that again when time allows and we will, we will be a festival and um, with the change of terminology, but it'll, it will be the same and the students do have a fun time together sharing their projects. And what I would emphasize overall, it doesn't matter, you know, how long you have to meet or what your project looks like because some, when the projects make it to world, they look amazing because those teams I was able to be a reviewer. I had the privilege of being a reviewer at Worlds, and those teams have had quite an extensive time to do their posters, redo, think of extra projects. So as you go, just know wherever your team finishes, be, help them be proud of that and present that, and just um, be excited about the learning that took place and the teamwork. So I'm going to pass it to Tina. Hi everybody, my name is Tina Baker and I work at Mount Perrin Christian School and I've been involved with uh, the middle school robotics at Mount Perrin and our lower school and my son's been on the FT, FTC team. Um, so I've had, I've seen the whole process of uh, FIRST and what it can do for children. And truly it's an amazing program that allows kids to just come together and work together and learn those skills of the engineering process. Um, starting at a very young level with them realizing the importance of cooperation and uh, just working together. So I'm just going to go through a little bit on, of what is on your screen. Some of you may already be familiar with this, uh, but when you go ahead, the hardest thing is everybody wants to be, especially the young ones, want to be involved with Legos. And really first is a little bit more than just Legos. It's teaching them the engineering process and teaching them to work together. So if you are a new team and you've never done this before, the best thing to do is to start out small, very limited number. Um, and that gets hard when you're in a school where children see first in Legos. So that's going to be your first deciding point or decision point is trying to figure out how you're going to limit the number of children. But if you're just starting out, it's best to start out small. In meaning small team sizes, you can go up to, I believe, and Kelly, you can correct me, um, six to 10 members, is that correct? But what we have found is we will hold a first meeting with our little ones and have groups of teams. So we have um, about 12 students total participating. We've had up to 16, but what we've done is we've grouped them on their own teams. So in the afternoon after at school, we'll have 16 children, which that is on the large side. And that's two of us being coaches in the room. Um, but what we have found is when we group the kids in groups of three or even two, um, that is best. Four it works well too, because you can pair them up on the team. Two can be working on something and the other two can be working on something. 
Um, but it really gets hard to manage to find something for everybody to do if you have a team larger than four students. So that can be a little bit tricky. If you do have to um, have just one team registered with a larger number of students, I would strongly recommend you have lots of extra Legos on hand um, because they can help create the environment of the board uh, that they're building on. So the kits themselves, you can now purchase additional kits, but you would want to make sure that everybody has something to do. And that gets trickier when you go over four students when you're working with just one kit. Uh, first does require you to register your team on their dashboard. So you're going to want to do that. And if you have any trouble doing that, Georgia or Kelly and I would be more than happy to help assist with that. And with that registration, you will receive a kit and engineering notebooks. And the engineering notebooks go through the engineering design process, which will teach not only the kids, but if you're not familiar with it yourself, uh, the process of what true engineers go through in um, deciding how to get to their finished end project and that it's always a about the process and going back and evaluating, uh, did it work, did it not work? And just working together and coming up with ideas that are outside of the box. So those engineering notebooks can serve as a guide to you, depending upon the age level of your children and the group that you're working with, you can adjust how you approach those engineering notebooks accordingly, but you are going to want to just use that as a guide, especially if it's your first year using those um, or starting first. As far as additional materials for research, um, Kelly's done a fantastic job going out and finding additional videos to talk about whatever is in the notebook and just finding more background information about what the project is talking about. The more the children make, can make those connections, the better understanding they have and the better their imagination goes with what they're creating. And last of all, uh, the core values of FIRST. That is absolutely key to all of FIRST. And if nothing else, if they don't do a poster and they're Robot doesn't quite come out right. Um, at the end of the, your session of the year, what you want to make sure that you've taught is the core values. And first has two key words, cooperation and gracious professionalism that is core to their roots. And basically going up the line through middle school and the high school teams, it teaches the gracious professionalism is it's not about winning. It's about how you got to where you are and how you did it together as a team and how you've worked together as with the other teams. Especially in the middle school process, um, when you go to the competitions and if a team doesn't have a battery or something fails, it's expected that your team steps up and says, here, we've got what you need, go ahead and use ours. And that is core to um, really where we wanna be in teaching um, just how we want to work together in society. So cooperation just means it's about the competition, but it's about cooperating together, whether it's with your own team members or additional team members or outside of your own team. So CORE really does a fantastic job emphasizing that uh, throughout the process and going through the engineering design process of just thinking through what you're doing, how you're doing it, and uh, working together. So that is key. So don't, as you approach this, and if you're a first or second year um, startup team, don't worry about getting to that finished product. If you focus on teaching your children those core values, that is absolutely key to not only the first program, but life lessons in general. So that is um, essential to the whole process. Kelly? And I just want to say thank you, Tina, for talking about the core values. They are very important. So thank you for that. You're welcome. So so now so now you have your team registered. You have hopefully less than 100 kids that you're working with. <laughs> I have heard of teams. I have heard of coaches having 100, and um, that was tough. <laughs> so find a way to limit limit your registration, whether it's just a time stamp. And, um, you know, we do have, we have talked to teams and mentored with teams that um, 
do an interview process to make sure that the children know that there's a project involved. So um, we, we definitely have a little information on that if that would be helpful to you. But for the most part at the elementary age, we try to just include as many as we can with the volunteers that we have. Again, limiting it for the quality of the program and being able to help those teams think through and talk through that engineering process and learn the core values. So, so our meetings were typically 10 to 12 weeks. We would try to allow enough time to set up and clean up because you certainly don't want to come back to a room with Legos all over and um, you want to make sure they're being responsible and taking care of the materials that, um, that have been purchased with their registration. So we encourage you, I just put a little side note, to take photos throughout the time if you're able to be in person. If not, you know, find a way to do that virtually as well, but it's good to have snapshots of the students as they make progress in, and um, as they're working together in whatever way that that um, looks. We have found that one and a half hours is ideal for each week, and that included a time to get a little bit of water and a quick snack maybe, um, and then also time to wrap it up. The hardest thing to do is um, stop in the middle of a project for a child this age, so you just tell them to hit the pause button. We, um, we would store the boards for the next week and just try to keep that team's Legos all together and encourage them to keep the we do set um, very organized. And on that note, um, I, I took the training long ago from, from FIRST that was um, training that was giving you helpful hints and ideas before you start a team. And it was very benef beneficial to hear from other coaches. One coach said, that the routine, if anyone in the whole Lego down, and, and, and then when someone found it, they would say Lego up. That way you don't lose those critical kit pieces from your We Do set. Um, also, it was helpful to have a Lego cup so that if any, anybody did come across a stray Lego, that it just had a central place to be placed. Even if someone was vacuuming, it, vacuuming the room at the end of the day, they knew where to put those pieces that maybe um, snuck off the table or fell in between the cracks of the desk. So definitely keeping everything organized is important. And we can, when I show you the last picture, we can show you the board we created um, was glued. Um, it was two of the gray um, Lego plates glued on top of wood for sturdy carrying. So that was helpful when we did travel um, with our kit, um, with our, with the project. Also, um, Georgia mentioned the online resources. As a coach, be sure to click out on those um, resources throughout the season. I, I know in years past, they've been adding videos that are great introductions for your team meeting. And sometimes the video, it may not be on the exact topic, but it'll remind the students of the engineering process and give good real world examples of how this process is used in creating new inventions or new ideas. The, um, the site also has helpful research information that you can read or share with the students. Sometimes you can print things from that for them to read for the older students. As far as the engineering notebook, it's, um, I would say, you know, sometimes there's more space for the students to write and you don't have to feel like they're, they always have to fill in the blank, but I definitely would have them write before they go to build time. Um, and then you can set the notebooks aside and let them be doing hands-on project work. And the notebook ended up in our case to be, and I wish I could give credit. Um, like I said, we've received so many ideas from different teams that we, um, we learned to use that notebook for our poster. So the engineering notebook did not stay whole as one piece. It became something for the students to cut. They would cut the selection that told about them as an individual and the hobbies. And so we would cut that notebook and make it part of the poster or the trifold. And on the note of a poster, since this year it looks like we'll be sharing at first at least in a um, Zoom type format or a WebEx, um, you probably want to have the poster, if you could, if it'll clip onto something so that it's steady 
Um, if you do a trifold, that's easy enough, but if you also could put, if you have a board, you could put magnets on it or clip it up on a board behind the student so that they can easily refer, and that would help the person viewing or reviewing the project to be able to see it easiest. Um, and for our expo last year, we each team just had half of a table and they would spread out their project and each student would get to share. And it was fun to see them take turns and talk about what they had, um, the ideas that they brought to the, to the project and what they had decided as a team. So um, Georgia, if you want to show the last slide, I'll describe some of the components. So this, this actually, actually this was the Mission Moon team and this was an older team. So this was a team that happened to be able to, you know, they had at least one student that was quite um, quite good at typing. So they were able to convert some of their, so, but really if you look at this poster, there's only three um, pages that were typed. Most of our younger teams have handwritten pages and it's not quite that much information, but this team was obviously able to read and research the moon and the project in general. So if you look in the center, it's heavy with the pictures that we had taken throughout the season. And then where it says Mission Moon and probably one, two, probably about eight, six or eight of those items are cut directly from the book, including our team. So all four of those, those write-ups were, were cut from the individual student notebook, engineering notebook. The board on the bottom, if you can see, there's a wooden board underneath the two gray plates that served as our base to build the project. So the students had been building separate individual projects that they eventually combined into one larger project. And your project can be any size smaller than this for sure. And you can even keep the project on the individual plate. So there's a lot of flexibility. Again, it depends on your time frame and um, what, what works best for your team. So um, Georgia, that's all we have to share. We love working with FIRST. If you, if you have ideas, send them our way, and we always love talking to teams um, about ideas, especially in this new unusual year. So we'll be working together to make this a really productive, um, fun year for, for our students. Thank you, Kelly. That was a lot of use, helpful, useful information, and I know the new coaches will really enjoy having the benefit of hearing from both you Kelly and Tina, okay, some very good information. So thank you both. And so that is all of the uh, presentation. And so now if we have any questions, we're welcome to those questions. Do we have anything, Mike? Uh, not yet, but I anticipate there will be. Uh, it was a great presentation, I, I enjoyed it. So uh, we'll just give them a couple minutes to gather their thoughts in the Q&A box. Okay. And I'll just take this moment to mention that we do have a Facebook page, and that is called Georgia First Lego League Explore. So uh, anyone who's not registered as a team, you can just go to the Facebook page and you can see some information of what's going on, or you can post questions. Uh, you do have to ask to join the page, but we let anybody join it, and uh, we usually get back to you pretty quickly. Now, if you are a registered team, or you have had a registered team uh, in the past few years, then I do send out a monthly newsletter, so you will be receiving that. And that'll have any updates about uh, the season. We also have some grants available uh, that I just posted. So I try to keep in touch with teams at least once a month. Georgia, I'd like to add, um, as far as, you know, teams and forming together, um, I don't know if we mentioned the t-shirts or not, but we have, when you do events, um, if you're able to, we have done t-shirts for our, our students, uh, and what we've done is we've done it a couple ways, but last year we made, like I mentioned before, we had individual teams, but we made the same t-shirt as a school t-shirt for our whole group for um, 
the students. So if you're able to do uh, t-shirts, that's just another fun way that the kids can feel part of a team, an academic team. So that's something else that you could possibly consider doing with the kids. That's a good idea. Yeah, kids do seem to enjoy that team atmosphere and they do like to all have their team shirts. We have a question coming in. You do, and sometimes just for you folks, you might need to sometimes scroll in the Q&A, but yes, you have a question in the Q&A. Okay, so the question says, since my organization is completely virtual this year, we have one out of state student. Is that okay since the festivals will also be virtual? I think that would be fine if, uh, if you're able to uh, connect with that student, then as far as I know, there's no uh, restrictions from first as you can join your team. So yes, I think that would be fine. And I just you might want to make sure you read that guide because it does have some tips, I believe, on uh, how to connect virtually. And that second kit that you can purchase, you know, might come in handy also. I don't think I see any more questions popping up. We do have a few more minutes, I believe. Um, yeah, we still have some more time. So, Tina and Kelly, anything else you can think of that uh, maybe a new coach question might have? This session will be recorded and will be posted to the Georgia First YouTube channel. So if we have any information that someone might, you know, watch this recording later, maybe if you can think of um, maybe someone who's trying to decide whether to register a team or not, uh, any guidance maybe for them. Um, what I was going to say is definitely start small. Uh, don't be intimidated to start a team. Um, some people, because they don't feel like they're STEM qualified, uh, the children absolutely love it. So even if you don't have a lot of experience, go ahead and try it because the outcome, the kids absolutely love it regardless of whether you feel confident in as being a coach or not, they are not going to know the difference. And sometimes you just have to feel your way through the process uh, to become comfortable with it. And again, you have a great support system here with Through First. So I would definitely encourage you to go ahead and try it. Also, if you are going to meet in person and it's an after school group, I would strongly encourage you because the kids have been at school all day. And this is it's a Lego activity, but there is learning involved. So if you start your session off with a snack, as Kelly had mentioned, that's just a great way to make sure those sugar levels are at the appropriate starting point. So when those little discrepancies come up and they're learning cooperation, having a snack before they start is a great way to just make sure that they stay um, balanced and leveled throughout the whole hour and a half session if you're able to do that time session. But that's just a little tip of how to be more successful if it's after school. That sounds good. Yeah. And I agree. Uh, don't be intimidated at all. I know the first year that I coached my son's team, that was in first Lego League. But it was a learning experience for all of us, you know, for me as a coach, as well as the students. But we all just had a great time. It's a lot of fun to just learn right alongside with the kids. So don't be intimidated, you know, just jump in and have fun. You know, uh, everybody's gonna learn a lot and we'll really have a good experience. And especially so, this year with us being, ver with not knowing all that this year can um, have in store for all of us, just being virtual and going from in session to possibly only being virtual and somebody here said that they are going to be virtual just know that everybody's feeling their way through this uh, year and that there is no right or 
specific wrong way that you're doing it and we'll all learn together. So if you do discover a great tip to go ahead and share it uh, because it's just helpful for everybody to know what's been successful for somebody's team. That's a good point, yeah, yeah. So if you have tips to share, uh, please post those on our Facebook page. That would be helpful for new coaches and all coaches this year with the virtual. Uh, so any information you can give about maybe how you teach the core values? Absolutely. I'll, um, I was going to offer a couple of tips and I'll do that at the end of, so the core values are integrated throughout your notebook. You'll see them in various um, places and usually, typically in the materials, we've seen one core value as the focus for each, each um, meeting time and you definitely want to talk about those you know, review and talk about those and talk about what those, we, we did a lot of modeling with what does that look like on your team. Um, just a, one idea that, um, you know, they have to come to a decision on a team name. And, you know, rock, sometimes rock, paper, scissors is, is the choice. <laughs> but actually, we found that if we gave each person a chance to um, brainstorm some names on a note card, and then, then um, they could talk, pick the, the top name and so they circled that. So they all put forward one idea and into the center. And then we kind of scrambled them up so it wasn't that you were voting for a specific person, but you were voting, okay, which idea do we think would truly um, tell about us as a team? And we gave each student two Legos. So they would place, they could vote two separate places. They could put both Legos on one name. So that kind of took a little bit of the, stress of deciding a name off, and that was an idea right from the notebook. So sometimes you can use the tools right in front of you to help the students work through making a decision together as a team. And we know that collaboration and working together is a huge important skill that if they can learn young, some of the strategies that will help them, like Tina said, in life. And talking about the Legos, some newer teams might find that um, when we've met with them, they're building their supply of Legos. You'd be surprised if you just send out a note, does anybody have Legos in storage? Or, you know, some people picked them up from donation centers. Georgia mentioned that she has um, some links and there are also links on the, the website about cleaning Legos. So you can just do a quick clean and really um, build up your extra Lego supply for your project. So, so those are just some ideas. And then last but not least, I was going to mention the ages of your team. Tina and I have, we have had combined ages and it has worked very well, second through fourth graders, because the older students can mentor the younger, the older student can type where, you know, the younger student can give ideas. So we've had that model. And then we currently just have a grade level model. So we work with four teams of third graders for um, the first part of the year. And then we'll jump down and work with four teams of a younger or, you know, we'll switch to a different grade and um, work with four teams for the second part of the year. So I hope that helps. That is very helpful. So what is the youngest age or lowest grade that you have worked with? We did our first year, we tried to do a first grade class kindergarten. And what we found is that kindergarten really wasn't quite ready for the thought process of it at the time. Um, they were very interested in just um, putting the Legos together. And even that, they just weren't quite there in having a purpose. So we actually, so that we could do, you know, quality, we upped it to second, third, and fourth grade. So. Okay. So that's good to know. Uh, and that doesn't fall in line with what work has done. You know, they've came out with that Discover uh, program, which is for kindergarten and first grade. Um, and actually, I want to correct myself on the fourth grade one. Last year, we did something a little bit different uh, for our fourth graders, where we kind of did an interim program to introduce them to the next level of FLL so that they could just dabble in working with the robot itself. So we kind of, right now our current program is where we do a first Lego league at the um, explore level for second and third. 
and then fourth last year. And again, each year we, we've explored ourselves and tried to figure out what works for our students. Um, we introduced them just to the, the robot. And then our fifth graders kind of do a um, mini version of FLL, so to say, where they're not competitive, but they actually go through the whole process of it so that they can learn how to build the robot and start creating a core project of similar to FLL. And then starting in sixth grade is when we start our competition teams and we have sixth, seventh, and eighth graders that do FLL. Oh. Challenge. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. yeah. So do y'all have any experience with the Discover kit? We do not. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, uh, I haven't met someone yet. Um, I don't really manage that program because it is only available by class pack. So um, that goes strictly through first. So I don't really have any hands-on experience with that program yet. But mm -hmm. I'll keep looking for someone. <laughs> so do we have, I don't think we've had any questions pop up yet. Uh, Okay. So we have 10 more minutes left, um, but I feel like we've covered pretty much everything. Can, can y'all think of anything else that maybe we should cover that might be helpful? We just had a question come in saying, can we have students younger than second grade and explore? Okay. And I would say, go yeah, ahead. Go ahead, Tina. I, I would say the answer is yes. You would probably do best to do it towards the mid, starting mid-year rather than at the beginning of the year for Explore because, again, first graders come in as uh, kindergartners, and it's just the maturity level and their ability to process the information of what you would like them to do. So you absolutely can take any first program and tweak it to fit the age level and the maturity level of your students. And again, it's exploring yourself on how to have the program work for those students. So the answer would be yes. It would just be a little bit more challenging if you're trying to work through the engineering notebook and having them write in it um, and the expectations. You just have to adjust your expectations for the appropriate age level. Thank you for answering that question. Yes, I would agree with that also. Um, for all the first programs, the lower uh, age or grade limits are just more of a recommendation. Um, so that is up to you if you want to start early. So I'm not seeing any more questions at the moment. Coming up maybe. We had another question. Okay, uh, well, it should be an interesting year. I think the theme uh, sounds very fun. Uh, I think that will be a fun thing to try to tackle. So maybe teams or coaches that aren't quite ready to start just now, maybe you're trying to just get back in school and uh, get your rhythm going or find out what your area will allow. Uh, we understand that, but just know that you can start this program at any time. Uh, the season will run all through your school year. So you can start this at any time if you want to wait, you know, later in the year or even, you know, January, February. Uh, that would be fine also. Um, time, time wise, maybe calendar wise, you know, how much time do y'all recommend? Uh, that, that you need, I guess, to pick, fit in those 12 sessions, but time-wise, what does that usually amount to for y'all? So, our, so the, some of the projects that you saw, I, th I believe we put in some buffer time, and so where the notebook might have had 12 meeting sessions, and it does have, um, or 11, it had where you can combine the last few sessions in previous years. Um, and that, that's tricky. You just hurry the project a little bit more or 
Um, you can also do a really simple project and present to parents. Um, if you need to limit, you do a limited size event later in the year. Um, and then I wanted to point out, so, so to your, um, I wanted to point out that um, you, you had mentioned that it was $35 to buy an additional kit. I would recommend going ahead and investing in that for the sake of, you know, that exchange. I mean, just having more hands-on materials that the kids can keep separate. So I think that's a great offer that FIRST has given this year to have that extra kit. Um, for a lower cost. I agree with that also. And I think, Kelly, you had mentioned to me uh, that you might take last year's materials and uh, maybe teach that. And that's fine, too, if anybody, you know, wants to start out with something they had last year. We know last year got cut short, so maybe you didn't get quite finished. I think, Kelly, you said that happened to your group. Right. We we actually still have the projects in cabinets, so it's kind of, it's hard to go take apart those projects. They were almost finished and ready to do, they were just going to do a presentation at a STEM night at our school, and we were going to have our four teams in the media center presenting those to mostly parents and maybe other high schoolers at our school. Um, it did get cut short in March, but um, we're, we're actually going to let those, we, our hope is to let those students start fresh. So that if the benefit to starting fresh is if, if they are able to participate in um, a virtual festival or a live festival, they would have the project for this year's theme. So we have a question. Will Mount Perrin organize a virtual festival this year at their expo last year was excellent. First of all, thank you for that great compliment. Um, we are trying to feel our way through this year ourselves. We've actually delayed in starting our robotics groups. Uh, just so that we could get start back to school and see how that goes. So um, we are just now um, sending out our applications for our middle school students to start the FLL program. So we're going to kind of start there and just continue to see how the year progresses with just everybody being in school. So we don't quite have an answer for that concerning the virtual festival yet. Um, that is a great idea that we do it, um, not just only for our school, but include others. So we will have to get back to you on being able to provide that answer. But if we do decide to do something, we definitely will send it out and make it available to Georgia so that she's aware and she can send out that information. Yes, yeah. that was a great event. I was there, I was one of the reviewers and it was a great event. Kelly Moss had quite a bit of um, involvement in making that come out so nicely for the yeah. younger kids. So thank you, Kelly, for that. That was a team effort. And I will say, I took what I saw at World and that celebration and the high five line. I mean, I guess suppose if we can do it later this year, it has to be air five. But um, <laughs> kids, love, love the kids love celebrating the learning and showing it off. The parents loved it. And we, we enjoyed celebrating with everyone. So our hope is to do that in the future, at some point in the future. Yes, I'm sure we will be back there again. Yes. Okay. Any more questions yet? Okay, so we, uh, we're at 341. What I have. So we could go ahead and wrap up. Um, unless y'all have anything else to add? I can't really. Anything else? No? Mm -hmm. Nothing else? Okay. Well, thank you, ladies, for joining me. Uh, I think this has been very helpful. We've got some good information out here for new coaches or returning coaches. So I know a lot of people will go watch this recording later and then uh, they might send some questions in to me. That would be fine. Uh, you can send them to me or post them on the Facebook page either way. So thank you again for joining us. Lady, thanks uh, on behalf of the participants who don't have voice. Just let me voice there. Thanks. It was a great presentation. We appreciate you. Uh, and to reiterate what Georgia said, folks, this will be posted on the YouTube channel. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Kelly. Have a, great, Kelly. have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.